I'm Kevin Brackett, the solicitor for the 16th Judicial Circuit, which is York and Union Counties, and I am here to share my concern and my support, my concern for this issue and my support for the efforts that are being made to reform how we pick judges in South Carolina. It's not a, a sexy topic that everybody knows about. Most people in South Carolina probably don't even think about how we pick judges, but it's a critical issue. We have a system in South Carolina in which one branch of government hires, pays, and can fire the other branch of government. And that is not what we were all taught in civics class. There should be three separate co-equal branches of government to ensure that there are checks and balances and each one can check and balance the other. But when one hires, pays, and can fire the other branch, you do not have three co-equal branches of government. You have one that is an employee of the other and that must change. So I support 100% the efforts being made to reform. And this is the first step. There are other things that need to be done down the road that will allow the executive branch more involvement in the selection of judiciary, and ultimately, I would argue, the people, the, dis the power to retain or not retain in retention, not contested elections, but retention elections. But today, this is an important first step. Reforming the Judicial Merit Selection Committee is absolutely important in removing and reducing the influence that the legislative lawyers in South Carolina have over our judiciary and the ability that they have to pick those people and then go practice in front of them in the courts. That is wrong. It needs to change. And I appreciate the efforts that everyone is making to ensure that this terrible, terrible situation, this process that we have, that this terrible process is reformed at the outset at least this much. So thank you very much. I appreciate the thank opportunity you, to be here today to speak and good luck getting this through the, the legislature. You're right, it is past crossover. I think that's by design because both of these bills have been in the, in the Judiciary Committee. Uh, you know, the process here is you get a bill in the committee, that doesn't mean anything. And, and we need to put pressure on, on the Judiciary Committee to get a bill out so that we can yeah. discuss it, so that maybe we can amend it. But the first thing we have to do is get a bill out of committee. And so right now, I think yeah. Ms. Cobb Hunter addressed that pretty, pretty well. Uh, the establishment, I think you said, mm -hmm. sometimes doesn't want bills to come out of committee. So we got to get a bill out of committee. That's, that's why I beg you to start telling your readers about this problem. Maybe they'll put enough pressure on other people. We can get a bill out of committee. I'd also add this is a two-year session. So and we're both freshmen. We're coming into this with fresh eyes or fresh energy. So. We understand it may not happen overnight, while we think it should, um, but we're putting the energy behind it to, do, to make that change. As you know, the governor, both in his inaugural address and his state of the state address, addressed this issue, judicial reform. As you also know, the attorney general about three weeks ago had a press conference, had a bunch of solicitors and a bunch of sheriffs there addressing this issue. So there is pressure now from the top to do something. So I did go in and talk to the Speaker of the House when I introduced my bill. And uh, his basic response is, well, I like some of it. Uh, his basic response was, I don't think the governor should have uh, that much authority in, in appointing the people. But that's basic response. All those things can be changed if people understand, if the people put the pressure on leaders then we can get some, some things done. You know, all these people are willing to compromise if they feel like they need to. And if I may just add to that, none of us up here are naive enough to believe that this is going to, has been uh, welcomed with open arms. We know the way this works. And even though they are freshmen, they've been here long enough to observe, to see how things work. But because something is difficult, and because somebody is opposed to it, that doesn't mean that effort shouldn't be made to try it. And when it comes to who is sitting on the bench, passing judgment on South Carolinians, we need to be willing to take it to the, to the people and make sure that we don't get discouraged because leadership in either chamber or in both chambers, because let's be real, Nobody wants to give up power. We're not confused about that. And they aren't going to just say, okay, y'all, here it is. We've got to make sure that the public, and that's Rep. White's point about y'all, 
uh, if you amplify this issue in a way that, as people say, if you make it plain that you are talking about giving uh, power resting in people who may benefit from that power, I think that kind of starts changing the conversation when the public starts talking to the House and Senate about what their wishes are. And if I might, let me, let me make it plain for the folks at home. I work very hard in my community to keep my constituents safe. Solicitor Pasco works very hard in his community to do the same thing. Sheriff Foster and the other sheriffs and chiefs of police in South Carolina work hard to protect the people and apprehend criminals when they break the law. We can't do our job if the referees, as Representative White put it, are being picked by the criminal defense bar. We can't keep you safe. So if you want to know why this should matter to you back at home, it's because we can't keep you safe if you don't step up and make your voice heard. Make the people in these two rooms over here understand that you're not asking them for this change, you're insisting on this change.